In these clips, we see a B-25 bomber 75mm cannon in action. These cannons were added to the G&H models to improve their low-altitude anti-shipping attack capabilities. Over 1,000 of these variants were ordered. In combat, though, the added cannon did not deliver on expectations. They were removed after around 5 months of service. The intent of this video is to review the cannon's features and characteristics, their combat performance, crew comments, and the reasons why they were removed and replaced with machine guns. General Kenny's 5th Air Force is well known for experimenting with innovative tactics and armaments. The channel has discussed application of these innovations in these videos covering skip bombing, mass type bombing, WEWAC airfield attacks, Battle of the Bismarck Sea, and use of phosphorus bombs in the Rabaul Harbor attack. Kenny's go-to guy for incorporation and testing of these armaments and tactics is Pappy Gun. As a way to increase the forward-facing firepower of the B-25s, an M4 75mm cannon was incorporated into the nose of the B-25. On the surface, it seems logical that upsizing the forward-facing 50 caliber machine guns to include a 75 mm cannon would only increase the damage of a ship attack. If 12 machine guns are good, then 8 machine guns and a 75 mm cannon should be spectacular. As discussed on this page from a Naval War College document on the B-25 armaments evolution, the cannon could also be used to dislodge the dug-in enemy. The concept proved to be a tactical failure. In 1938, the Air Corps installed and tested a 75mm cannon on a B-18 Bolo bomber, but it never came to fruition. This image shows a 75mm cannon added to the belly of the B-18 used in live fire trials. The cannon mounted to the bomber. Channel comment. It appears to be mounted in a ball socket, which would give some aiming capability. In summer 1943, North American Aviation was assessing the feasibility of adding a 75mm cannon to the B-25 airframe. General Arnold pushed this concept forward and Pappy was a strong advocate for the modification. Its first combat trial occurred on July 28, 1943, with Pappy at the controls. This image shows a B-25G model sporting two nose-mounted 50 caliber machine guns and a single 75 mm cannon. This cutaway shows the G model's armaments. The 21 rounds of cannon ammo are located in these racks. It's loading tray, mounting bracket, and blast tube. The cannon is single shot and the rounds need to be manually loaded. The 400 rounds of 50 caliber ammo are located in these boxes. This page from a 1944 75mm technical manual outlines characteristics and a view of the M4 aircraft cannon. The M4's cannon assembly weight equates to 893 pounds. The gun is 110 inches in length or 9.1 feet. The projectile's muzzle velocity equates to 1,970 feet per second or Mach 1.8. The projectile's weight equates to 14.7 pounds. The barrel's recoil length is 21 inches. You can see the muzzle translate 21 inches into the blast tube in this video. This image shows the size of the gun's recoil springs, its mount assembly bracket. The cannon loader sits between the pilot and the top gunner. The co-pilot was eliminated from the crew. This B-25H model's cross-sectional image shows the location of the cannon, ammo rack, cannoneer slash navigator facing aft, pilot, and top turret gunner. The B-25H in action. Average cannon barrel life is 6,000 rounds. The cannoneer placing a round on the loading tray from the ammo rack here. Close-up image of the blast tube and the 75mm cannon barrel muzzle. The B-25G models illustrating the cannoneer's position with the caption, The pilot fires all forward-facing guns. On the B-25 pilot's control wheel are the buttons for firing the 75mm cannon, forward-facing 50 caliber guns, and releasing the bombs. An N-3B optical gun sight is located here with a backup 35mm rad ring sight. All of the fixed forward-facing guns are pointing straight ahead, no converging point. This image shows the H model with the four 50 caliber machine guns and a single 75mm cannon. The cannon is slightly different than the G model, but they fired the same round. The N3B optical gun sight is located here, as is the backup ring sight and sight post. So, why did the cannon equipped B-25 not meet expectations? This was evident from its first combat mission. The system was not sufficiently tested prior to its combat debut. Pappy attacked two Japanese destroyers with his cannon. Seven cannon projectiles struck the destroyers with no effect. The damage from the projectiles was not significant. The destroyers were eventually sunk by two 1,000-pound general purpose bombs, which were skip-bombed into the side of the ship. This image shows a Japanese destroyer, Ariake, under attack by Pappy. 
five seventy five millimeter cannon projectile struck this ship. One of the projectiles struck this stack, highlighted here, causing minor damage. This attack is summarized in Kenny's notes. Pappy struck the destroyers with seven rounds, and to his dismay, they did not slow down. The projectile's three-inch diameter holes had little effect on the destroyer. The wingmen told him to stand aside and skip bomb their 1,000-pound bombs into the destroyer, splitting it in half. As discussed in these channel's videos, to sink a ship, you have to breach its hull below the waterline. The 75mm projectile may have the penetration power to bore into the destroyer's hull or superstructure, but the internal damage inflicted will be minor. This chart from a 1945 Terminal Ballistics data document calculates the homogeneous armor thickness a 75mm armor-piercing projectile can penetrate based on the distance from the target and angle of impact. For example, a 75mm projectile can penetrate around 3.7 inches of armor from a distance of 1,760 yards or 1 mile from a B-25 at a speed of 350 miles per hour. Given these conditions, a projectile would certainly penetrate the side hull of a Japanese destroyer. Pappy's attacks show that cannons are not ship killers. The projectiles just don't have the destructive power needed to destroy a combat ship. Bombs do. This table lists characteristics of the 75mm ammo. These two rows represent the loadout for the B-25's cannon. The armor-piercing rounds have great penetration, but its explosive fill is only 0.144 pounds. The high explosive round has more explosive fill at 1.47 pounds, but it has less penetration power. The M65 bombs that were used to sink the destroyers contain 558 pounds of TNT, as shown on this table from a 1945 bomb infuses document. Even if the bombs do not penetrate the hull during a skip bomb attack, the bombs will strike the hull, slide down, and detonate underwater against the side of the ship due to its four-second time-delayed fuse. This will have the same effect as a torpedo or a mine strike. A M65 bomb has 380 times the explosive fill of a 75mm cannon projectile. Unless a cannon projectile strikes and detonates the warship's magazine, the damage will likely be minor. During the 30-second attack run, the pilot could only get off three or four cannon rounds. The manual loading system was too slow. This placed around 6 pounds of TNT and 54 pounds of steel into the ship when firing the high-explosive rounds. Damage from 14 50 caliber machine guns firing a 5 second burst equates to around 1,000 rounds on target. That's twice the steel on the target over a larger area. This is a more effective ship anti-aircraft suppression attack. A machine gun equipped B-25 is a better ship anti-aircraft gun suppressor than a 75mm cannon equipped bomber. The real ship kill damage though comes from an effective bomb attack. A 5th Air Force B-25 crew member pointed out he has never heard of a pilot who expressed regret the cannons were removed. The cannon was replaced with two 50 caliber machine guns. This 12-gun war machine was the most destructive firepower he witnessed in World War II. To deal with the slow rate of fire, auto-loading 75mm cannons were in the testing phase at war's end, as seen on this page from a 1945 Pacific Area Material document. The auto-loading cannon's weight would increase to 1,548 pounds, but the rate of fire would also increase to 30 rounds per minute. Another big advantage of the auto-loading cannon is a pilot could walk the projectile splashes to the target, like with the 50 caliber rounds. The cannon was not a viable ship destroyer. Pappy had innovative credibility and had not steered Kenny in the wrong direction up to this modification. Factories were cranking out the G and H B-25 models with the ineffective 75mm cannons. The co-pilot station had also been deleted on these models. This page from a February 1944 823rd Bomb Squadron Combat Narrative document evaluates the 75mm cannon's combat effectiveness. A township was attacked with bombs, strafed, and struck with 25 75mm cannon rounds on a February 1944 mission. This was the last mission of the cannon-equipped B-25s. The cannons were used operationally by this squadron for three months and were not combat effective. Given the fast speeds and low altitude of the attacks, only three to four rounds could be fired and still maintain any degree of accuracy. The cannons are more suitable for ship strikes rather than land strikes as you have more time to set up a ship target. The weight of the cannon reduced fuel consumption and range, not justifying its minimal to no increase in combat performance. The cannons were replaced with machine guns.
B-25s were better ship attackers with more machine guns rather than with a blend of machine guns and a cannon. From this 2005 Maxwell Air Force Base document on bombers in the Pacific, the machine guns were easier to aim and could put more rounds on target. Let the machine guns suppress the ship's AA fire and let the bombs sink the ship. Cannons are not effective in either suppressing the ship's anti-aircraft fire or sinking the ship. Sighting and aiming the cannon was more difficult than with the machine guns. Machine gun aiming can be done while firing them by walking the splashes to the target. The cannon's recoil also stressed the B-25's airframe. This image shows the addition of two machine guns protruding from the cannon's blast tube. That's 12 forward-facing machine guns if you include the upper turret. Two additional guns in lieu of the 75mm cannon with a small aerodynamic cover fairing. Kenny relayed his overall experience regarding the 75mm cannon performance on this page. Even with two extra 50 caliber machine guns, the cannon equipped B-25 is only adequate in attacking ships no larger than a barge. These are examples of Japanese barges from a 1945 naval intelligence document on small Japanese ships. While two crackshot pilots liked the cannon, the rank-and-file bomber crews did not. He was not a supporter of its continued use. The same weight of 50 caliber guns would be more effective. Machine guns are more effective in suppressing a ship's anti-aircraft fire up to the ship size of a light cruiser. This is an example of a light cruiser. General Kenny's innovations are legendary, but he missed the mark with the cannon-mounted B-25s. The fifth learned to innovate and learned from its failures. The answer was quite simple. More forward-facing 50 caliber machine guns, not bigger guns. The 50 caliber was right-sized for the task to suppress the ship's anti-aircraft fire and use skip-bombing tactics to destroy the ship all in one pass. The final B-25J model incorporated a plexiglass nose, but could be swapped out with a strafer kit as a depot or field modification. If you have found this B-25 75mm Canon case study review interesting and informative, please consider supporting the channel by liking, commenting, and or subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.